This is Cynthia Sue Larson with RealityShifters.com, and I'm also the author of the best-selling book, Quantum Jumps, An Extraordinary Science of Happiness and Prosperity. Today, I'd love to share with you something that I consider the core of my meditation practice, my quantum jumping practice, and it's a top tip for you. But first, I'm going to start with a quote, which is from Albert Einstein. He once said, a new type of thinking is essential if mankind is to survive and move toward higher levels. So if you're wondering, what does he mean by that and how does that apply to my life? It applies to all of our lives, what I'm about to share with you. Maybe not what he was talking about, but what I'd like to share with you today is an idea of how to get back into a playful state that most children have where you can rise above any problem. And this is something that we tend to forget as we learn more, think we know more, and generally get caught up in the drama of our lives. The key element here is play. And so I'm going to just go back to children and remember a time, if you can, when you were playing as a child, and at the end of the day, you might have been playing good guys, bad guys, whatever, but whatever was happening at the end of the day, everything's fine. Even if there had been terrible calamity in the play, even if you lost a game, you know, things happen and so forth. But Here's the big idea. When you recognize that you are much more than the game, when you can rise above it, then you're no longer caught up in the drama of thinking that you're either a victim or a rescuer or some sort of a bad guy, the perpetrator. In fact, nobody really is. So rising above that blaming kind of a drama situation is extremely important. And it's something that you can see in your own life, you can see the benefits of rising above problems you might think you're having with relationships, with money, with your job, with pretty much anything. So here's the method. It's a three-step process we're going to go through today. And I see that it has relevance in my favorite theories having to do with the multiverse, which were written up in 2011 by Yasa Nori Nomura of UC Berkeley. And also, Raphael Busso and Leonard Susskind had a paper that same year, 2011. All of them basically presenting this concept that the many worlds is the multiverse, which is a huge idea. And if you think about it, and you recognize that you can allow yourself to feel a greater sense of awareness than the drama in your life, the problems, the issues, that you can be the observer recognizing, ah, something's going on, just like a child playing. Uh, that's really the second step. The first step, I'll, be, I'll walk you through it, is breathing. The second step is imagine that you really are awareness. The third step is move through your life playfully, feeling inspired by intuition. So how do we do this? Let's, take a, let's do this experientially, if you've got a minute. So start by closing your eyes, breathing deeply and fully, just below your belly button. This is abdominal breathing. And if you've practiced Qigong, yoga, martial arts, then this will be familiar to you because this is your energy center. Young infants know how to breathe this way. That's why you see their abdomens rising and falling when they breathe. So breathe to your lower abdomen, slow your breathing down, and bring your awareness to your breath. Intentionally noticing that you can slow each breath down to a natural rhythm that feels good for you, that's very deep and very full. When you really feel like you're, uh, this should take actually several minutes. We're going to pretend that you've been doing that like those cooking shows. Now skip forward, <laughs> take this out of the oven. But keep breathing like that. Keep your eyes closed if you can. And just keep staying relaxed, focused on that breath. And as you keep doing that, the second step can begin, which is imagining that your true identity is awareness. That means you're not your body. You're not a victim. You're not, you're also not a rescuer. You're also not the bad guy. You can rise above all of those labels and categories to a level of eternal infinite awareness that always exists. And this is a rather advanced step in meditation, but it's available to all of us. We all have access to it. Because when you think about it, who is really witnessing how you feel when you think, I am so upset? You are, the true you is the witness to feeling how you're feeling. And that means that's the real you. Now the third step after you do this meditation, which should really ideally go on for at least 10 minutes, maybe 20, for best effects, 
After you've done this for about 20 minutes of breathing, feeling I am the awareness, I'm bigger than any problem, any issue, any drama in my life, then that third step is when you come out of this meditation, you will be acting playfully like a child, following those intuitions and gut feelings as they lead you to do something different, to shake up that routine and the habitual way of moping and behaving that you might have been doing so that you feel this real sense of joyful enthusiasm in your life. If you don't feel the joyful enthusiasm now, as you're still breathing, just curl the, up, the corners of your mouth upward, even if you don't feel like smiling, and intend that you'll be experiencing joyful enthusiasm, that you will be getting to a place where you can do, as I talk about in my book, Reality Shifts, when consciousness changes the physical world, you can actually ex live your life lucidly. That's lucid living, being awake within your life, recognizing you are the awareness. So, until next time, this is Cynthia Sue Larson, reminding you to keep asking, how good can it get? And I'm with realityshifters.com. Thank you.